services. Transportation is the biggest program. It serves over 2,500 individuals in this community because if you can't get to the doctor, it's very hard to live in your own apartment. Many of you I see faces in this auditorium today who are part of our volunteer corps who help us. There's over 65 volunteers on transportation alone. Thank you. Thank you. The next question, um, Mr. Van Leuven, we're going to begin with you. As a board member, how would you protect the rights of the large landowners in this town and their right to develop their property? I think what we, this, this is a great question. I've been working on uh, getting an open space program launched in this town for about seven years now. And my view on open space protection is that it's something that's done with interested landowners. Someone doesn't want to participate in an open space program, they shouldn't have to. But what we can do as a town is we can provide people with options and opportunities. Um, we, uh, uh, John Clarkson worked with Assemblyman uh, Fahey and Senator Breslin to get a, a law passed that allowed the town to launch a term conservation easement program that helped reduce the taxes, uh, that would give people an opportunity to reduce taxes on undeveloped land. I think we need to pursue that more. You know, I don't like seeing uh, properties that are in agriculture or woods or whatnot um, uh, uh, tax to a level that forces development. We need to give people options so that they can continue to have and manage their properties as they have for generations. Thank you. Mrs. Grosser, please. Um, I would have to say that I agree. I think we need to protect our open spaces and our large landowners, and we need to give them definitely more options. We need to work with um, the state and develop <laughs> broader programs that allow them a little more flexibility with those options so that they don't have to result to logging or development in order to maintain land that has been in their family for generations. Thank you. Mrs. Becker. I have to say I don't have anything to add to that. I agree with uh, Dave and um, Mr. Grosser that, that um, we need to offer more options. How can they keep that land in their family? And we need as a town to work with them so that that works to their best and the town's best interest. Okay. Mr. Harrington? Could you just read it one more time for me, please? Sure. As a board member, how would you protect the rights of the large landowners in this town and their right to develop their property? Thank you. Um, yeah, I too agree with, with what everybody has said, and it started with David. Um, but I, when, I, when I was a young boy, I remember, uh, to tell you about growth, I remember uh, hunting ringneck pheasants on uh, Route 32 across from where the uh, Elmia Park is at this point. Um, and that's all been developed and I've watched it grow. Uh, I, I don't think the problem is protecting um, the rights to keep people from developing their property. I think what we've seen is that they've been forced to sell, they've been forced to log off because of what's happened with some of the uh, uh, tax increases. Uh, so I think that's something that needs to be looked at. And uh, quite frankly, at this point, if there's any of these land, large landowners that want to speak up right now and sell their property, I'd be happy to talk to them because I think they want to save their property. I think they want to keep uh, the town green and open at this point. Thank you. The next question, I'll begin by asking you, Mrs. Zagrosser. I have observed many residents in wheelchairs and walkers in our community. How can sidewalks and access to business be more, made more user friendly? Well, we have to improve our sidewalks. We have a lot of aging sidewalks in this town. Unfortunately, sidewalks are very expensive. So you have to consider, um, while, when you're building new sidewalks, then you have to consider how you can repair your old sidewalks in order to make everything accessible for all people. I think that's a big goal that we have. It's certainly one that I share in this town, that we have a very walkable town. Um, but it comes down to being able to repair the sidewalks and open them up. Some of those sidewalks were built back in probably the 50s or before, before ADA compliance was necessary. So to go through and revamp those is going to be quite an undertaking but an important one. Okay. Mrs. Becker. Well, I live with a man who is in a wheelchair all the time, and he, um, and we talk many times about how could we make the town a bit more accessible. If it's new development, new buildings, they are mandated to make that structure accessible. It's when we see an older business and we know that it's just one or one and a half steps and how easy that business would be if we could encourage that business to perhaps pave their drive, their, 
their parking lot up to the entrance to the building, it would be accessible for all. I think that's something maybe would be a suggestion to work with the chamber to look at businesses and say, is there an easy fix to this and maybe develop a small committee of people who could help guide that business to, to, into a solution to allow all people access. Thank you. Mr. Harrington. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Joyce did really say it. Um, the things you're looking for, really, the law provides for, and that's, and that's you know, being done. Um, when we're talking about sidewalks, though, I think something that's important is it's great we're uh, making the town more walkable and getting more sidewalks in where they weren't. Um, being a resident of Wemple Road, Fearbush Road, if you walked or you jogged along Fearbush Road, you took your life in your hands till the sidewalks come in. So we really you know, value that coming in. But I think what's important is not just putting in the new sidewalks, and I think Bridget might have brought it up, um, is fixing the old ones. Because there's spots in Old Delmar where you get on sidewalks, and I wouldn't want to walk on them myself, let alone um, an aged person or a young child. I think you're asking for trouble, and I think they're in extremely in uh, a state of disrepair, uh, and they need attention. Thank you. Mr. Van Leuven. Um, I, I have several friends who are on the bike and pedestrian committee in town, and I've gotten an earful on this on, on many occasions, and it's something that I agree with. We're, we're all on accord that we need to have um, as many sidewalks as possible. I think for the accessibility issue, we need to get in and repair the sidewalks that have uh, degraded over time, um, in addition to building new ones. The key, though, is that building sidewalks is insanely expensive. And so what we need to do is we need to aggressively go out and find additional resources to improve our sidewalk. There's money out there. Um, I, in, in, over, in my jobs over the last uh, 30 years, I've raised millions of dollars and gotten in, 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 in government grants and appropriations to get projects done. There's money out there. We need to go after it aggressively, we need to land it, and we need to put it to use to improve our sidewalks. Okay, thank you. The next question, Mrs. Becker. I'm going to start with you. Okay. Have you contributed to development and consideration of the town policies related to the comprehensive plan, conservation of open space, and other land planning initiatives? And what initiatives will you advocate? I'm sorry, start again. Have <laughs> okay. I personally? And I remind all the candidates, you oh, do have a red card. Oh that could be used on these more complex questions. Perhaps I could just make a your pass answer. on that. Okay. I'm not from your community, so I'm not 100% sure what all of your issues are. So I'll read it. I want well, to use the red car on the sidewalks. <laughs> you, I'm sorry I reminded you too late. Okay. Um, have you contributed to development and consideration of town policies related to the comprehensive plan, conservation of open space, and other land planning initiatives. And what inif initiatives will you advocate? No, I have not. And I, I can't add anything to that. I would have to talk to the planners about it. Uh, that's not an area I, I can't, I, I know nothing about. Okay. But I will find out. In this case, the question took longer than the answer. It did. <laughs> really? Okay. Let's add another one to it. <laughs> no, it, it, no, I have not, and, and I'm not ashamed of that at all. Um, it, it wasn't necessarily my forte at the time. I, you know, you may hear later about some things that I have done, and uh, and we'll share that later. Uh, but quite frankly, uh, I, I have watched a lot of uh, what's been going on, a lot of the studies that have happened in this, in this town, uh, whether it's the police department or in town hall. Um, and I wasn't too jazzed by the, what I got, you know, what I saw in the end. Um, I saw people that were working for the cause and putting numbers in and statements in. Things kind of got changed because you can see by the look on people's face. I'm a very good read of people. It makes me good at holding poker, I'll tell you. Uh, but I have seen the look on people's faces when they're reading numbers on a slide and they're like, geez, I didn't put that up there. So I question why that is. Okay. Mr. Van Lumpen. I'm going to pull the red card. Okay. <laughs> Good. This, this, this is an issue that I've worked um, uh, long and hard on in town and it's something I'm passionate about. Um, I was involved in the town citizen conservation advisory committee uh, for many years and then I was on the comprehensive plan review uh, committee uh, when uh, we were looking at uh, updating and considering the effectiveness of the comprehensive plan. The beauty of the, of the comprehensive plan it has three parts. Economic development, which is critical for managing the property tax rates in our town. We need more economic development. We need to go after it aggressively. The second is residential growth, 
Our town is going to grow. That's what towns do, especially great towns like ours. So we need to manage that growth in a way that ensures the developers are held to meet or exceed all of the town's standards for traffic, for infrastructure, for pedestrian access and safety, and the like. And we need those developments to contribute to, not to degrade the community feel that our town has. And then the third leg is open space protection. And that's the aspect of um, the comprehensive plan that the town really hasn't done anything on. Now, there's a myth that advocating for open space protection means coming in in black helicopters and jackboots and stealing people's properties. And that's ridiculous. It's a myth. If you look at everything that the town has done on open space protection, it's always with willing landowners. It's not forcing people to do anything. It's creating opportunities and options for them. And I feel very strongly that we need to get serious about implementing the Agricultural and Farmland Protection Plan so that the town can take steps that make it easier for people in town to start, maintain, and have farms in our community because we're richer with farms, woods, and parks than we are without them. Thank you. Mrs. DeGrosser. Thank you. Um, I was involved somewhat in uh, parks and developing the master plan that I participated in that somewhat um, to help develop the master plan for parks, uh, which I think is important to have a master plan and important to um, try to use that as a guideline as we move forward to develop our parks and maintain our parks, which is um, a wonderful thing for our community and for our youth services. Um, the comprehensive plan, I was not involved in that, but I would like to be involved in the re-revisiting of the comprehensive plan because I think it's very important um, that we take a good hard look at what that plan has given us so far. We are seeing the sort of the fruition of those decisions that were made and the type of development that that plan has brought us. And I think now we can take a look at what it has given us, if it's the way we want to continue to have our town developed, if our infrastructure can truly handle that type of development at the rate that it seems to be happening um, and make a decision whether we need to make some changes in our guidelines or maybe it's fine and we continue and also I think we need to open up our the economic part of it the business part of it to uh, attract businesses to our town um, we have that Vista Technology Park and it has not met the expectations we had all hoped for I think we need to be more aggressive um, in recruiting and in enticing business, true business, to come in to Bethlehem and make um, meet our expectations for hiring, for employment, and for um, the bump that that type of development, that uh, business development, will give Bethlehem. Thank you. Thank you. I was just looking at the clock and realizing of the many things I told you, the one thing I didn't say was the time frame that we were going to try to keep these three parts separately. So we will have time for two more questions for the board members before uh, they give their closing statements. So I think, uh, Mr. Harrington, <coughs> I begin with you. Yes, ma'am. And I'm not sure what this means, because as I say, uh, I, this isn't my issue in my community. Uh, there has been discussion on a police, is it K-9? This says K-9, is K that? Says. Okay. okay. There has been a discussion on a police K-9 for the town police department. If this becomes a possibility, will you support it, and how will it be utilized? Put that right there now. <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's any, uh, any surprise that, you know, with, with my background of, of what that means to me, and, uh, and I'm glad I got to lead off on this. <laughs> Uh, folks, there's something that's very important to you. Uh, we've, we've talked about safety a couple times tonight. We've talked about our aging community. Um, we haven't had a canine in our department since 2003 uh, when we in La Chapelle retired. And there have been some things that happened, um, some court decisions that kind of scare people away. But since then, we've figured out great ways to make it work. And, uh, and not having the, back then when we had a dog, we had a German Shepherd that was uh, dual purpose. He was aggression trained, which mean, means he was able to apprehend suspects as well. But there are other ways, and the, and the dogs I operate with are Labrador Retrievers, and they do nothing but lick you to death. Um, but the most important thing is this, and not the fact whether you have a dog that's able to sniff out um, explosives or a dog that's able to sniff out drugs. Um, the most important thing is having that dog to be able to track people, and not just for uh, the bad guys that we have to deal with on a daily basis, uh, but for our children that go wandering, 
or get lost, and certainly for our aging community that does the same thing. Um, when we're in the month of January, um, like we had last year and it was so cold, if we're going to wait for another agency to provide their canine if, and that's a mighty big if, if we're able to get it, uh, we're waiting for 45 minutes to an hour. And that's just to deploy the canine. If you think that that old person or that young child can live out in that weather for that period of time to wait to deploy the canine, and you think that that's not worth it, then we need to have a, a little greater discussion than a public forum, because it's not worth it. And uh, it, it's, it's a lot more simple than they think. And, and I, I did, in fact, uh, offer to donate one of my dogs to, to the town of Bethlehem. And, and there are ways to make that work, and it was put off as being too expensive. Those could have been answered with a phone call. Okay, thank you. Mr. Van Lorgen. I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. My uh, job as a town board member uh, would not be to tell the police what their priorities are in the context of what uh, tools they need to do their job. And I, I, I would never want to do that. That's, that's why we have trained professional police officers to guide us on what their priorities are. My role as a town board member would be to work with the police department to identify what their priorities are in the context of what we're trying to accomplish and then figure out how to achieve those priorities in the context, not just of the police department's budget, but in the context of the entire town's budget. Because the police department is a key part of the entire town's budget. And what we decide here has impacts over here. And so my role would be to help them figure out how to meet their priorities, not to dictate whether or not they should have a canine unit. Mrs. Grosso, would you? Would you just read that question for me? Sure. There has been discussion on a police canine for the town police department. If this becomes a possibility, will you support it, and how will it be utilized? I would certainly support a canine for our police department if that's what our police department felt that they wanted and needed, and um, as long as we could afford to have that canine. Um, how, as for how it would be utilized, um, I would say I would have to leave that up to our police department and the people who are professionally trained to handle dogs in the community, um, but I would certainly support that if that's something that the town of Bethlehem would like. Thank you. And Mrs. Becker, could you respond? Yes, um, as many times I look at how can we solve this if the police feel we do need a canine here in Bethlehem. I think there's many ways, many times we talk about, oh, the cost of food, the cost of veterinary care, the cost of overtime, and so forth and so on. But what about how can you make this come about? How can it be funded? Would it be a good way to partner for the union, to partner with the town, to provide that as a service to the residents? Perhaps one taking on, or a vet, veterinarian who would offer to donate their time and expertise to that animal to keep that animal healthy. And I think that's something that could, can always, to work and partner together, can bring a town together and can bring service provision to better together, and I think that's, sorely needed by the town and the police. Thank you. And for the final question before the uh, ending statements, we'll start with you, Mr. Van Leuven. This is, what is your opinion on new development in the area? Vista Industrial Park, New Scotland Road, Hamlet, Wemple, something, tech maybe. I can't read it. All right, try to remember every one of them. <laughs> Vista Technology Park, um, really want to see more uh, uh, industry going in there. One of the things that really killed us on that was the creation of the uh, tax-free zone at SUNY. Um, all of the uh, 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 companies that we were hoping to draw into the Vista Park are going up there where they don't have to pay taxes. And we, and we can't offer that um, as, as a town. Wemple Road, um, you know, if they meet the, uh, the, the town standards, they're free to develop it if that's what the landowners want to sell, though it breaks my heart to see land that's been in agriculture for 300 years turn into um, uh, hundreds of housing units. Um, what were the other ones? Yes. Hamlets. I think hamlets are an important uh, uh, development concept because small businesses rely on walkability. Um, and hamlets will bring um, uh, walkability aspects to areas where we're concentrating um, residential development and commercial development together. Thank you. Mrs. Grosser, please. Um, the Vista Technology Park, um, 
I agree. We need. I'm disappointed that we haven't seen the industry, the business growth come in that we had hoped to, but um, that SUNY tax. Free zone. Thank you. <laughs> SUNY tax free zone certainly hurt us. Um, at the Hamlet development, particularly the New Scotland Road one, the, uh, the, what's been up so far seems lovely, and the plan for the buildings with the three stories, that, that but the four-story building is where I have some concerns about that, with that one. As far as Wemple Road goes, that developer has not answered all the questions and addressed all the issues that residents in that area um, have and have voiced. So until that happens, um, I'm hesitant to support that project. Fine. Mr. Becker. I agree with both of the candidates um, about the Vista Park. I don't think there's too much more we can say about that. The Hamlets, I would like to see um, future traffic studies there. Um, I, I know when it was presented in Slingerlands at one of the town meetings, it just, there wasn't enough information about it. Um, I do believe that they're in the process of 40 additional units. Um, I just want to make sure that in the future we don't have another 285 of them popping up. I'd also agree that four stories in this town, maybe three, um, and I think we need to do some research on how people will enter and exit that Hamlet complex. Um, the Wemple Road, the same thing. It's a little country road, Fear Bush is. I have big concerns about all the traffic congestion. It's already unbelievable on 9W, up near uh, 9W and Fear Bush. So that's a major concern. I think we should also learn to look back and see what studies have been done already before we jump into paying for new ones. Thank you, Mr. Harrington. Going last pays off, because they all said very, uh, very important things that, are, that I would just repeat, but I'll save the time here. Um, I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit on how this all goes with development. Um, I do live on Wemple Road, and that is a concern how that's going to be when it comes, uh, comes to pass, if it does. Uh, I think we need to look, when we're looking at residential development like that, we really need to look a little further in the critical uh, components, the infrastructure, the traffic, and how it's going to affect us. Um, and I don't feel enough of that's been done. I think we're growing for growth's sake in some, in, in some ways. Uh, when it comes to the businesses, uh, Vista Tech Park, um, I'm not sure how we do it at this point, but the most technological savvy thing we have up there are the scanners at, uh, at ShopRite, and, uh, and attracting that business to, to get what we need um, is, is important. Uh, but when it comes to the businesses, uh, if you talk to the economists and policy wonks, they'll tell you we should be around 60-40, and we're about 80-20 for our split now, business residential, and we need to work on that. We have empty storefronts in this town. We need to work on getting the Peacock building filled, filled up there. Heard there might have been a bid on that by the Sheriff's Department. It hasn't been confirmed yet. Um, but uh, uh, work on uh, some of those places and fill those places up before you build for building's sake. Thank you. I think that was a very good question to end tonight, this part. Let's give the candidates first round of applause. <laughs> and and let's, let's give them a little second because now they have only two minutes. Um, for their well, you we know I can't there? do that. Well, you then you'll be here feeling my like tap. <laughs> Where okay. do you want us? Up there? Down Wherever there. you feel comfortable. If you want to sit there, please oh. feel free. Otherwise, I'm moving away from the podium. Well, I might as well stay where I am. First. I drew the lucky number one. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I want to say how will I address some of the challenges facing town government at this time? Well, if I'm elected, I will carefully explore future development, inform residents in areas where projects are planned. Although the website works for many, I will research other means to effectively communicate to the public. A large number of individuals are not computer savvy and they feel their questions are left unanswered. I mean, we just talked about the number of seniors in this town, so we know, and many of them are not computer savvy. We, in the workplace, have stayed up with technology. So there's still 80-year-olds living in their, there's still 100-year-olds living in their own house in Bethlehem. So I will would remain, I will promise to be available by phone to answer their concerns. That doesn't mean they're always gonna get the right the answer they're looking for. Um, town employee morale. I'm going to work to understand the workings of each department, cross training of employees, and evaluation of the department needs and their duties of the staff. Fiscal responsibility. Town is in good shape this year with the best financial rating in the area. I'm fiscal, fiscally conservative with the need to provide residents with the best services available within that. The infrastructure. I plan to research DPW Highway and the Town Hall for their future needs. 
I don't know it all. I don't think I know it all. I will never know it all, but I plan to learn and understand. I feel I will make a difference by serving as the community connection to town government. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> No introduction this time, I just need the time to talk. Uh, thank you again. Uh, my whole life I've been an investigator of sorts, uh, investigating somebody's injuries to help them, uh, causing origins of fires, uh, or people themselves. Uh, we need to know that our leaders uh, are asking the questions that must be answered, and looking into things that affect us, be it minor quality of life issues, or major incidents like the landslide. Shortly after I retired and years before I decided to run for town board, I began to look into ways to help the town by staffing the police department a way to save money and maintain the standards needed to protect our community. I, in fact, drew up a restructuring pro proposal, attempted to contact the current supervisor, and was not responded to. As a community leader, I feel the supervisor should welcome input from the residents and not simply ignore us. We, the residents of Bethlehem, deserve better. We deserve a town supervisor and town board that will actually listen to and represent those that elected them. I will always welcome input from our residents and know that as our next supervisor, Jim Foster, will do the same. As a board member, I will be vocal about mismanagement and misinformation given to the public. Joyce just mentioned a, a flat budget for 2016, but the interesting thing is, as of September, we have a $650,000 deficit this year already. They also don't tell you that in 2017, 2018, there's another $750,000 built into that budget as a deficit. That's $1.3 million over the next three years out of our emergency savings account for cost of living. Pretty scary, isn't it? I will always give you the straight facts and be there standing up for you and for what is right. For this reason and many others, I look forward to representing you as your next board member, you the taxpayers. Thank you. Good evening. I would just like to thank you all, the Spotlight, the League of Women Voters of Albany County, the Capital Area Council of Churches, and the Bethlehem Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to thank all my fellow running mates that are here tonight, and all of you for coming out with your time and your questions. I appreciate that opportunity tonight. Um, I think we need to put people before politics. That's what needs to happen. We need to protect the character of Bethlehem, we need to protect our open spaces, our neighborhoods, our plazas, our businesses. We need to incorporate our community groups and our town services to work together to build the best community that we have seen so far. Um, I think we need to change the attitude at the town government. We need to be open. We need to listen to our residents. We need to respond to their concerns. And we need to enact initiatives that do just that, that reflect that we've listened and we've responded. Um, I think we need to increase the interaction again of the, the community services, the youth groups, the senior services, bring all that together to create an environment where leadership is doing the right things for the right reasons. Thank you. I've heard a lot of great ideas tonight, and I'm sorry that the structure of the forum didn't allow us to have an exchange and start running with a lot of the great ideas I was hearing from everyone um, at, at the two tables this evening. Um, I've always supported the communities where I've lived, and I'm running for Bethlehem Town Board because I care and I can make a difference. My professional work as, as a strategic planner involves cutting through personalities, politics, and posturing to identify real issues and to find pragmatic solutions. Over the years, I've also built consensus between deeply divided interests, fought for clean water and a healthy environment, and managed complex budgets. I believe these skills would translate well to the town board where I'd work, as I have everywhere, as an independent thinker who represents all of Bethlehem. I would have three major goals as a board member. First, deliver services in a fiscally responsible manner. Our town government plays an important role in our quality of life, including fostering economic development, providing services to senior residents, and protecting open spaces. Bethlehem residents don't have bottomless pocketbooks, however, so the board must be strategic to ensure that these services continue to be delivered at the highest level without breaking the bank. Second, we need to guide residential growth and protect open spaces. We must carefully guide development in town to keep Bethlehem from devolving into soulless sprawl. 
and we must work with interested landowners to protect family farms, woods, and other open spaces to maintain the town's wonderful character. And finally, we must operate town government openly and civilly. Regardless of political parties and beliefs, we're neighbors and Bethlehem will thrive only if we work together. It's important for town board members to be independent thinkers and to make decisions based on what is best for all residents and businesses. I have the demeanor, skills, and experience to achieve these goals and to find common ground, foster collaboration, and help Bethlehem thrive long into the future. Thank you. I think this was both an informative and lively evening so far. Let us let the candidates here leave and take a sip of water. And I invite uh, the next two candidates up. These are for your supervisor, town supervisor. Maybe you want to stretch or something. It's, you've been sitting very quietly. 